what's up everybody, it's Rox and I'm coming to you today with a review for Real Housewives of Atlanta now, episode number 16, so let's get to it. Alright, sweetie, in the show, I'm, I'm over it. I'm not even going to get on sweetie today because I don't understand why Kim still has her. If she's not a good worker, then why is she still there? Fire her. Kim is trying to justify the fact that she needs to get rid of Sweetie. Okay, the daddy didn't say get rid of Sweetie. Your stylist didn't say get rid of Sweetie. And now, um, Croy has said get rid of Sweetie. So, what is the big deal? Get rid of Sweetie. So, you guys, uh, Phaedra. Funeral home business is a go. It is happening. She goes down to the uh, funeral home and meets up with Slick Willie's wife. And uh, she is going to give her some lessons in embalming uh, and making up, preparing the body for a funeral. So she goes in there, you know, they cutting and they draining and they pumping. But yeah, you know, she's about to do it. Apollo is all in. Her mom's all in. Uh, really nothing about Kim or Phaedra. Really, I need to just get on to Uncle Jessup and his faithful concubine, Cynthia. Okay, you guys, so Peter is planning this one-year anniversary uh, party. Do you know what is expected on the one-year anniversary? Paper. So that means that you're supposed to take your ass to the Cheesecake Factory, give each other a card, give each other some little semblance of your token of your love and the fact that you guys made it a year, and take your ass back home or to the hotel and go screw. But no, they're having a party. Because, uh, you know, the caliber of people that they hang around with, according to Peter, um, they are expected to have a party. And it has to be a $10,000 party. You guys, there's so much of that in Atlanta. It's so many people that's trying to keep up with the Joneses here that it is sad. It's, I've seen it so much, so I know that I know his way of thinking. Um, Cynthia was just like, you know, I didn't really want no whole big old thing. You know, it's ten thousand dollars. Brother man only got nine thousand on it. He 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 short a thousand. You know, he's like, you know, can you can you help me out with a G? Um, but I don't want you to do nothing. But I still need your money. It's just like, why are you even having this? You're not even having it at your house. So what? Who you impressing when you having a party at somebody else's house? That's they shit, not yours. Then he tells her that he got a Bentley limo lined up for the uh, party. So she's just like, oh, okay, that should be nice. I can I can sit in a Bentley limo. <laughs> well, a Bentley limo, huh? All right. Then he tells her that her sister can't ride in the in the damn limo, and uh, I too agree that the sister shouldn't be in the limo. And uh, but I couldn't understand why he couldn't just express himself a little bit differently. Like, okay, this is your wife. This is your wife's family. Your fa wife is very close to her sister. Why are you driving this wedge between the two of them? Why are you choose making her make a choice between the two of you? All you had to do is say, I would really prefer if your sister rode in the car by herself or rode in the car with somebody else and not in the limousine with us. Because truth be told, she shouldn't be in the limousine with you guys. It's y'all anniversary. What the hell you need all these other people in the car for? But, you know, Peter is just ignorant. He is just such an asshole. I don't know what kind of persuasion he has over Cynthia, but you know, she just kind of drinks in all that ignorance and she just kind of looks at him just kind of like, yes, sir. And then Mal, you guys, like Mal, I can't even really ride with Mal either because Mal is so out of line. Like, so Mal comes in and, uh, you know, she's talking to Cynthia and they get to talking about the party. She want to know who's giving the party, how much does the party cost, who's paying for the party. And it's just sort of like, wait, 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 hold on, wait a minute now. What you got on it? Because you obviously got some. you got to put on it if you got to be knowing all this information. All you need to do is show up. Unless you going to be taking over the reins, then you don't need to be worried about how this party is happening. You know, I know you, I know you my sister and all, but do I call you and ask you who paying the motherfucking light bill out in France when you with your man? No. Okay, so stay out of mind, please. And so anyway, you guys, the big day comes. And Peter is sitting up there yelling at the damn dial tone on the phone for two hours about a Bentley limousine that ain't showed up to pick him up. Y'all, that nigga ain't had no damn Bentley limousine. Why wouldn't the damn limousine show up? You pay for it, right? Okay, well then they coming. Okay, well no, it was supposed to be a gift. Even that, I was just like, that Negro was never getting into no damn Bentley limousine. So, you know, he yelling and screaming. It's, it's the same as like when you be at the mall 
and you know you ain't got no damn money left on that credit card, but you still trying to buy some shit. So you up there and the people tell you that the transaction is denied and you going to cut up 10 types of fools up there, cuss out the damn salesperson because they won't let your transaction go through. I know it's some money on that card. No, you know it ain't no damn money on that card. You couldn't even buy some socks if you felt like it, but you want to sit up here and act a fool. You know good and damn well you need to take you and your damn card and get the hell on up out the store. Same way with Peter. He doing all that showboating and yelling and screaming and everything about this limousine because to me it probably was like he was thinking maybe he was going to be able to get a limousine, but it didn't call work together and so you know he just gonna be yelling and screaming and it didn't even sound like he was talking to somebody he, what you said what you not coming what you mean you're not coming but we sitting here waiting we all oh, just like negro please they ride on down to the party they getting dressed at the party and cynthia's getting her makeup done her mom and her sister show up um again her mom and sister is on one for real you know very out of line just kind of like oh we didn't think you guys would make it and you were amazed that you guys made it a year just stuff that even if you thought that this is not the time and the place we at this party you know my damn nerves is on edge already i don't need this kind of friction between you guys at this party please at one just but tonight can we just all get along but anyway whatever the party gets going you know peter with his classless self ain't nothing worse than a nigga trying to act like they got class and ain't got not nam bit of it he whistles lets everybody know that she's coming you know she's working the room and everything when they get around to saying their thank yous and all this uh side note why is nini up there uh what did nini have to do with this party i don't really know but anyway peter is announcing different people you know he purposely emits mal and calls her a hater and says all these inappropriate things to her says all these inappropriate things about her to everybody at the party it makes everybody uncomfortable everybody's kind of looking around like oh uh oh uh oh no he did not just say that and you know poor mal is embarrassed but when it was all over and mal confronted her and was just like you should have said something you have him out there talking about me like that and you know cynthia's just like you're making a you're making a spectacle of yourself well your husband just made a spectacle out of me when i was just out there and he was saying shit about me and you didn't say nothing it's just like this whole thing wouldn't be such a big problem if Cynthia would set some boundaries. I mean, you already know that your sister and your husband don't get along. Why do you let there be so much commotion? Why don't you put everybody in their place? Listen, babe, I need you to understand that that's my sister and I will check her when things get out of hand. I don't need you talking about my sister. Okay, and listen, Mal, that's my husband. Even if you guys don't like him, that's who I chose to be with and that's who I cho choose to support and I don't need you guys to tell me anything differently I don't want to hear it no more okay I'm tired of it and that's that but she don't never say that instead she lets the friction continue until it gets to a point like this where everybody is upset and nothing is salt resolved so Mal leaves she's upset she's crying you know Cynthia don't really understand you know so the party was sort of like a crash and burn So Sheree tries to whip Lawrence into some sort of frenzy, right? <laughs> uh, letting him know about the whole faggot issue when they were in South Africa and how Marlo called um, the gay guy a faggot. When they get to the party, you know, Lawrence immediately goes to uh, Marlo and pulls her aside, which I really did admire. It's just like, no, we're not going to do all this back and forth and cattiness and all this. We're going to go straight to the horse's mouth. What did you say? So... He pulls her into the kitchen and you see Sheree following too because I guess she feel like this is going to be her swan song, you know. So they get up in there and he was just like, you know, Sheree was telling me about what you said about the faggot um, thing. And Marlo's looking at him like, faggot? I didn't say faggot. You know, Sheree is just like, you didn't say faggot. And she was like, no, no, bitch. I mean, I said that you ugly and you ain't got no man, but I didn't say nothing about faggot. And I was thinking to myself like, wow, does she got to know that they're going to um, run the tape? But whatever, Marlo just flat out denies that she called the gay guys faggot. She's like, I got a lot of friends that are gay. And um, ironically, when they got there, she was there with Derek J. So she just did not own up to it. And it was funny to me that Sheree did not get whatever kind of reaction she thought she was going to get. And Marlo was just like, kind of just like dismissed her. Like, I didn't say that and I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I'm sure she was thinking to herself, like, I'll worry about that later. But tonight, no, you're not fixing to have it tonight, Sheree.
So Sheree um, goes out into the party and finds Candy and was like, Candy, don't you remember when um, when Marlo said faggot? And you know, Candy was just like, well, I didn't really, <laughs> you know, Candy always be like, I didn't really remember exactly what she said. I mean, she said something. I remember something about her saying. Y'all be so tired of Candy. Like, I love Candy, but Candy is not like, she don't have no she don't, somebody in one of my viewers says she don't have any type of, um, any type of debate skills. And it's true. It's like she'd be all tough on her one-on-ones or confessionals, but she don't never really say nothing at the time that she's supposed to say it. I'd have told Sheree, bitch, I don't know what she said. Shit, I ain't got time to be trying. You threw me under the bus with Kim. So I don't know what the fuck she said. Ask somebody else. All right, you guys. So that's it. <laughs> Two videos in one day. I'm like rushing. I got to get back to work. Um, you guys remember to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Miss Rocks. Sports Rocks. Everything I do is going to be in the bottom bar below. Okay? So I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I plan on doing the same. Until next time, Rockstars. Bye.